YouTube, what is going on? It is Gino Benino. Thanks for checking out my video. Um, I'm kind of one of those wanting to get things done moods and decided today was going to be a day where I, I'm sure you have this happen to you, where you don't organize and get your comics put away in a timely fashion and they tend to turn into a huge avalanche of nonsense. And that's kind of what happened. Uh, basically, I've got, I bet, three four hundred comic books that need to be put away and um i just want to show you how i did it and i'm going to show you a couple things um that i had from, i picked up when i was home about uh comic store stuff back in the 90s anyway i'll get to it so what i do is um first thing i do is when i've got a bunch of books there's some here most of these are new some are um older um i showed some of these in pickups but we make a long story short they need to be put away they need to be put either in long or short boxes um, what I typically do is determine uh, what goes where. So if I've read it, um, then it gets put away. If it's a, a second or third copy of something that I've got to read, then it kind of goes here. And the way I um, initially break things down is alphabetically. So what I did is made this pile um, A through H. Um, it's not fine-tuned, separated by any means. But I do need to do that. But I, I break it down into three parts because it's easier to sort when it's broken down. So what I do is A through H goes here. Then um, I through probably S um, in this file. Um, and over here is where I just kind of stuck the high, high uh, letters. Um, X's, W's, things of that nature. Um, so... Then what I'll do is fine-tune stuff. I will go through and, um, um, let's see what else. Yeah, the W's and whatnot are here. Um, so then what I'll do is I will take each one separately, and then I'll fine-tune alphabetize. So I'll put this in absolute, uh, I'll start with numerics. I think I do have some uh, 2099s here, and I'll start with that, then go A, B, C, and so on and so forth. Then when I finish with this, we go on to this, and the same thing, I'll alphabetize, and then of course the last thing will be that over there. Then we put them in the boxes and we're good to go. Now, typically what I'll do before I put them here is go through them and decide if there's any spec books, anything that ties in with movies, anything that I may want to uh, grade or sell or whatever and stick those somewhere else. I do have a special box for things that I'm thinking of getting um, sent off for grading. Uh, things that I may have duplicates of um, and may want to sell, for example, this kind of stuff. Um, got a bunch of them, so I may unload some of them. Um, on a secondary note, I wanted to show you this. Um, when I was home, I I don't know if I've, I know I've talked about working cons and whatnot, but uh, because I had a business in Los Angeles, I also um, had a DBA as a comic store, and I ordered enough comics to wear uh, Wizard agreed with me and basically sent me the same kind of stuff that they sent comic stores and I thought it was kind of cool just to show you what I had what this would have been would have been back in the early 90s um, things that um, had to do with this would be the stuff that goes up on comic book stores um, walls so for example there's a spawn poster um, 1992 and this would go, you've seen them in your comic stores or in the windows or in the walls and stuff like that. But I decided to hang on to a lot of them. Um, some of them here are very cool. This one, for example, let's see who's this. Oh, I thought this was pretty cool. This is Batman in his Asriel suit. I think people actually hated this. <laughs> but anyway, this is uh, kind of has a foil look to it. It's hard to see on the phone. Uh, camera, but uh, the, everything that's silver is is uh, silver, and everything that's gold is metallic gold. It's kind of like a foil uh, foil look poster. And then I have a lot of stuff here from Valiant, a lot of stuff here from uh, Image, Bloodstrike, kind of a failed, sadly a failed uh, adventure. This is, let's see, who's this? Oh, this is, um, sorry about that. I need two hands. This is Hardcore Valiant, uh, promo for book one, first issue. 
kind of a big deal back in the day, but not anymore. Um, this is, let's see, for Deathmate. More Valiant stuff. They were promoting their stuff, and they were kind of, um, both Valiant and Image was, you know, they were the new kids on the block. So they were, they were sending out a lot more promotional stuff than Marvel and DC, just simply because <clears throat> they wanted to get shelf space, and they were fighting for it. And they were, again, they were fighting DC, and Marvel wasn't having it. So, of course, they wanted to keep their shelf space. But uh, anyway, this is a poster for Infinity War. Very cool image of Thanos. And last but not least, let's see what I have. So this is a promo for another Spawn promo for issue number eight. I thought it was number one. It has similar, very similar look to it, but it's issue eight. Um, written by Moore. Um, some cover art or some art by Frank Miller. And this is coming in... Um, this would have been a preview. I wonder what that means. I bet it means that if somebody put in some art and McFarlane came in and cleaned it up or added to it or something like that. Then, oh, here's another. I already showed one of these. Um, then this is kind of cool too. These are magazines we used to get insider magazines for comic stores, entertainment retailing. And what this was was kind of, um, again, it was insider information telling what books are posed to be hot. Um, it would have some interviews, um, mostly promotional stuff, um, talk about how to advertise on your comic store and television, um, updating your image, um, an article for our Spotlight on Todd McFarlane. Um, he was talking about writing Spawn, I'm sure, um, upcoming conventions and whatnot. Uh, that's uh, Wizard was putting on. Wizard was very heavily um, involved in that stuff back then. Um, reading room stuff. Uh, and then this I thought was pretty cool. Um, similar to the 1 through 10 um, book specs. This was kind of like um, previews about what sold well, what uh, expected pricing, things of that nature. And what it would allow comic stores to do is to, they would all, you're, there's a form in the back and what you do is write how much you sold these some of these books for and that would help wizard decide uh, what they were going to list the book for i'll show you what i'm talking about right here this is a different one uh, this is let's see august of 1993 and there it is so what the comic stores would do is you would fill this in you'd put your comic book store name your location, all that kind of stuff. Um, you would put where you get um, how many of these books you sold. And then you would put the prices of um, some of these issues. For example, uh, Marvel was very concerned, or they were very concerned about The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, issue 361, uh, 229, or 289, excuse me, um, 238. 194, 122, 121, 101, 150, and 42. So they kind of decided those were the hot books back then. And they wanted, they figured that the price would fluctuate somewhat. They wanted to know what different parts of the country were getting for it and also what um, you were selling it for. So they would have some idea of what to put in their um, guides. And this would talk a little bit about market update. Very interesting read, actually. It says uh, this would have been September, so it would have been after a uh, summer. Um, after it talks about the death of Superman, uh, Superman, Man of Steel number 25. Um, image back issues seem to be the biggest victims of the increasingly thin comic buyer's dollar. Even the mighty spawn is not the back issue monster he was a few weeks ago. So this was probably... The beginning of the end, as far as uh, the bubble was probably popping right about here, because stuff had come out so hot and heavy. Um, the market was flooded full of stuff. Um, they're talking about back issues of Valiant. 
which was super hot back then, Solar 15, Bloodshot 6 and 7. Um, this is funny. So-called gimmick covers seem to still be working to some of extent for Valiant and Image. Recent releases such as Wildcats Trilogy, Exo Man of War Zero, and Death Meat Prologue have met with success. So what they're in essence doing is it's just kind of skimming this. They're talking about this was the beginning of the end. They were saying that sales were down. Um, um, things of that nature. They're talking about how many prints, how many copies of 497 Batman, uh, where he breaks, where Batman's back is broken. Um, I think the print run on that was just nuts. Uh, the only question left is Defiance performance in the marketplace. This caused quite a stir with the Plasm Zero binders, but that upset a lot of collectors too. One thing certain, Defiant was probably smart to sit out most of the summer. The stand should be a lot less crowded this fall. So in essence, what this MF, this is about is um, um, various markets, market shares, and the, the health of the comic book market at all. Um, there's other stuff in here. Articles about Casada. Um, again, more previews, price previews. Um, easy to sell, hard to find. Um, Vengeance of Bane, Sandman 8. Sword of Azrael 1, Shadow Man 16, Harbinger 1. Um, look at how much it was going for back then. About the same as now. $125. Bone 1, Crow 3. Uh, Man of Steel 17 was going for $13.25. Shadow Man 1, $32. You can get it for about a buck and a half now. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 300 was $70, bucks, which was a lot of money back then. Um... And that's it. Talking about um, uh, ProGuard, um, bags and boards, things of that nature. Uh, Surefire sell-through, uh, good and cheap. This month's installment, good and cheap, etc. Superheroes, I'm seeing if it mentions anything uh, interesting. Nothing really too much going on here. Factor Fiction, is, uh, is it true that Valiant will be printing a second Rye Zero? And it says sort of. In the incoming Rye trade, which remains, which reprints 1044, uh, Rye 0. So it's basically the answer is no. It's not going to be second printed. It's going to be put in a trade. Um, Steve Masursky, from uh, back then he was the CEO of Valiant, uh, talks a little bit about um, Frank Miller, John Byrne, etc. Anyway, yeah, we would get these and uh, we'd fill them out and sell them back. And again, I didn't really have a brick and mortar store at the time, but I was selling a lot of comics at conventions and whatnot. So that was it. So that is it, guys. I just wanted to show you that. I thought it was a little bit interesting, kind of uh, comic book insider nonsense. Um, again, it's different now. You can go on the internet and figure out prices real quick. You can either go to uh, the various sites or go to eBay back issue and look it up and thanks for tuning in guys i'll talk to you later it's gino benino i will see you down the road bye for now